Hi, everyone, and welcome to another version of a data-driven podcast. Um, and uh, I'm Dave Mariani. I'm the uh, the CTO and founder of AtScale. And today I have with me uh, John Langton. John Langton is the uh, the VP of uh, Global Engineering at AtScale. And he's the inspiration for what we're about to announce, um, in, uh, uh, which is um, open sourcing our semantic modeling language, or SML for short. So, John, welcome to the podcast. Thanks so much, Dave. And, and uh, thanks for calling me. And I was the inspiration, but I think this was something that you've been thinking about for quite some time. And, uh, of course, you're really the tip of the spear here. Um, so... Yeah, well, it but it, it took a team, right? So, uh, so put people so inside baseball here about at scale. But um, I, I run product, John runs engineering, but we both sort of do each other's jobs all the time, right? <laughs> because um, when it comes to the total product, you need both, and so uh, it's a great partnership. Uh, and uh, and really, um, what I want to do right now is just first of all, just take you through what we what the announcement entails and why it should matter. And then um, really get uh, John's perspective on what it means as a you know as engineers who are working in this new semantic layer space that's become so popular, um, and and what the future can hold for us. So let me share my screen real quickly because what you're going to see um, um, if you go to this URL is we now have a public repository. So it's a GitHub. Uh, it's semantic data layer is the organization. So this is not about at scale, right? This is about uh, this is about the community. We really want to drive a community where we can take semantic models um, and uh, and really provide a, a, a single standard so that uh, so that businesses, enterprises, developers can share uh, and can collaborate on building uh, these models. So uh, what is SML? It's an object-oriented, YAML-based uh, uh, language for describing uh, your data in a business-friendly way. John, stop me if, if, uh, if I miss anything here. But, you know, it's meant to be uh, very comprehensive, so it can handle any type of vertical or industry. Uh, it's based on open standards. Uh, with uh, integration with Git uh, and and using YAML as the sort of the the, the the language, so it's familiar and it's extensible. So we expect there to be lots of uh, of of community um, participation in making this language even better. So what we're announcing is that uh, we are announcing the the open sourcing the specification for SML, again, short for semantic modeling language. Also pre-built semantic models that have been written using SML. Uh, and then a bunch of tools and translators that will allow, uh, allow, allow different platforms that produce semantics to be able to share those, those, those proprietary semantic models or definitions with each other using SML as sort of like the Rosetta Stone that sort of allows you to, to bring them all together. So you'll see in the repository is you'll see, here's a sample of a semantic model. Um, and you'll see here is our object hierarchy. So this is all the different semantic objects. Um, and then you'll see documentation for what the definition of those semantic objects are. And if, if I click on a dimension, semantic object, for example, you see an uh, example of what a dimension looks like, and then a, an entire entity diagram that you'll see for how everything relates together, as well as descriptions um, and documentation for each of the properties of each element. And then finally, besides just the definition of the language itself, it's already preceded with a model library. So we have some tutorials, including AdventureWorks, which is like sort of like the standard for uh, for that Microsoft invented for describing um, or for um, or describing a, a fictitious business for which to build semantics on. 
And you could see that all the source code is all here, including calculations, connections, data sets, what have you. So lots of stuff to get busy with. Uh, and, uh, and I hope that, uh, that we're going to really sort of spur some, uh, some, some collaboration across the different semantic layer vendors, as well as, you know, different enterprises that really are looking to, uh, to, uh, to really translate and make analytics much easier for consumers to consume without having to be database experts. So John. Now that everybody knows sort of what this is and what this means, or sort of what it is, tell us a little bit about what you think it means and it means for the industry. Absolutely. Um, so, of course, there's a lot of open source projects out there. I, I think one thing to point out and emphasize is that this is a standard. It's not specific to at scale. You can use this to define semantics that could be used in Power BI, Tableau, Looker, any one of these different products, anything that uses a semantic layer. And a lot of the feedback and the challenges that um, we've heard uh, folks having are that there are so many different semantic layers out there and every vendor ends up creating a new one, right? So, you know, I, I think there's, uh, I mean, I, I won't, I won't throw examples out there. I was going to throw some examples out there, but, but I, I know of multiple that are being created right now by different vendors and none of them speak each other's language. And that's of course at scale where we sit in, in the environment, we integrate with a lot of different things. And so we've, we've always been about integrating with these different tools and wanting to speak the same language. But what we realized is that was valuable, not only for us, but it was actually valuable for the community to have this open standard so that if they want, even outside of at scale entirely, if there's someone who's familiar with Power BI and they're trying to do something for semantic layer, but they have to do it in a different tool or they want to migrate or there's some other, you know, use cases that they're tackling to have one consistent open standard. And just to be clear, this is an open standard. So anyone can contribute anyone can provide feedback. This is meant to evolve and serve the community. This is not only for at scale. So I, so I think that's a huge part of this to emphasize is that this is an open standard. It's not just open sourcing one kind of set of code that does one thing, but it's actually an open standard um, that could be implemented and interpreted in many different ways. On top of that, as you pointed out, we also do have code that's part of that open standard that can help you translate from one semantic layer to a different kind of semantic layer. So just to be clear on that, if you're using Tableau and you want to go to Power BI, you can use this open source project to translate from one to the other. Or if you're using Looker and you want to translate to Power BI, you can use this to do that. And um, I'd love your use of the term Rosetta Stone, I use it a lot myself. I don't know how many people know what that is, um, but that's exactly what it is. It's basically that universal translator between all of these different semantic layers. So so I think that's that's huge, and folks can develop tools that do different things with the the um, SML. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's a it's a, a massive step forward, and the fact that anyone can contribute. So, so John, I used Rosetta Stone. You just said Universal Translator, which is obviously a Star Trek. Star Trek. So you got to use that in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, but uh, but yeah, it's uh, uh, you know one of the one of the reasons why I think we chose at this this time to actually do that uh, in open source SML is that um, we've been working at this for ten eleven years now, um, and so what we found is that we've We've worked on this 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 semantic modeling language for so long that we feel like we have the the superset of everything out there of all sort of the, some of the Johnny come latelys or some of the new semantic layers they they haven't implemented the full feature spec and so I think one of the reasons why we can become that universal translator is that we do have the superset of functionality that can allow a tableau to be able to describe itself to a Power BI or vice versa. Yeah, that's a that's a fantastic point. So we were looking at what is the intersection across all of these, or it, I think more appropriately what you were describing, it's a, really a superset, not just the intersection 
Um, it's so fully featured. Um, and so there's things that you can do in that, 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 that some tools might not support. Um, but, but, um, I mean, I think it's, uh, hugely powerful to be able to translate, um, from one to the other and, and, and really define your data. And I remember, you know, much earlier in my career when I was sort of like director of data science, I would have loved to have something like this because there's so much complexities after all of the, the ETL workloads, when you're trying to define like, what is a metric, what is a measure, what is a KPI, not only for measuring performance, um, to be able to, you know, influence it, change it, optimize it. Um, uh, but those definitions, uh, get really, really complicated. Yeah. 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 No, no doubt. Um, you know, there's, we've also seen John, a lot of and we've written some of this about uh, we've we've written some of this ourselves, but a lot of the industry is recognizing that semantics semantics and a semantic layer is really critical for making Gen AI work. Can you talk a little bit about 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 that? Absolutely. So so we actually have. I want to be careful about the folks I mentioned because I, I don't want to steer awry of uh, of any um, anything. Um, but we have active partnerships with some very large companies that you would absolutely recognize where we're working on LLM projects and the, um, uh, the semantic layer is absolutely critical. I, I think this is becoming common knowledge. There was a really popular publication that came out in data world where folks talked about a semantic layer and they showed an evaluation. Um, we actually reproduced that exercise, but we wanted to use real world data. So thank you for your support on that project, Dave. So, so Dave's very familiar, of course, a veteran, uh, in the industry. And so we use a very common benchmark called TPCDS, uh, to do that. And we, again, demonstrated the fact that with a semantic layer, the accuracy is massively improved. Um, if you don't have a semantic layer and it, it makes obvious sense because an LLM, it's a large language model. It's all about the semantics of language and that includes language of code, language of metrics, but also just text business language. Um, and so it's all about mapping those semantics. If you want to ask a natural language question, what does it semantically mean? What are you asking about? And so having a semantic layer is very obviously something that's critical uh, in that technology. And so in these projects that we're working with these larger companies, in fact, some of them are the very examples I was going to mention before, but I shied away from. They're inventing their own semantic layer, but it's such a small, small subset of what we have in SML that there it's the some of the functionality is crippled. Um, so uh, so we're able to just be a massive accelerator to that technology. So that's where we're partnering with them and exploring those opportunities now. Um, and that's going to be the case with any generative technology that this really unlocks. Um, it takes it from being kind of a neat, nifty project that looks kind of neat if, if you touch it just right and do only the happy path. It takes it from that into something that's actually practically usable in a real business environment, a real business use case. Yeah, because a lot of the tools out there that do NLQ are really demo aware, aren't they? I mean, because, you know, you can't really, once you start to ask them a question like or use company specific um, terminology, uh, like a customer of ours said, you know, it's like GD, which means gross demand. It's like, but they can write, they speak in GD. They don't, they don't spell it out. It's like, uh, it's like, it doesn't, you know, there's no way an LLM would ever understand that. Um, and then there's the complexity of the actual query itself because schemas are really complex, right? You got hundreds or thousands of tables. And so how is an LLM gonna, going to figure out how to join um, all those tables together in a consistent deterministic fashion to give you the same and the right answer every single time? Very, very difficult without a semantic layer or a semantic layer engine, isn't it? That, that's right. And that's, that's even if your database schema makes sense and just as complicated. Uh, any, anyone who's worked for long enough knows that the schemas usually don't make sense, right? A, a lot of the time, I mean, I've seen crazy stuff of people will, will add one more column and just do this special join that, you know, exports the value into this new column because they, they can't they can't change the schema, right? Because there's too many applications that depend on it. And so the way it evolves over time are these hack after hack after hack. It's it's just the nature of the beast. Um, you know, and so so actually making sense across those schemas 
uh, is exceedingly challenging. But yeah, so having this unified standard that that everyone can, like it's no it's not like under the hood of at scale like you can everyone can see it now it's completely out in the open not only that you can contribute to it um and so that supports all kinds of business applications like like every dashboard you've ever seen can now be supported by this um you know you can define uh these metrics so you can you can take this spec and create your own code your own tool that actually understands this spec utilizes this spec it's it's meant to be a really comprehensive way to to describe data right it's that it's that it's that metadata so any of these tools that you're used to um uh using i was going to start throwing out examples but it probably show show the last time i coded i was going to say glue and uh you know uh, emr and amazon you know all these basically that kind of penultimate or ultimate layer where you're trying to show that, you know, business translation or the KPI or the metric or the feature, if you're doing AI, all of that now can be spe specified with this, within this kind of YAML that's completely open. Anyone can, tr can contribute to it. If there's something it's not addressing, then let us know. And, uh, you know, you can even contribute directly yourself, you know, um, uh, make the make the suggestion. So yeah, I mean, I think this is going to be hugely powerful. It's it's going to grow much larger than at scale, and, and I'm really excited to see the directions it takes. And you know, John, it even changes um, our own sort of t t product development process too, right? Because um, now that SML is open source, any change we want to make to even to our own at scale semantic layer platform. Um, you know, we'll have to contribute or, or suggest changes in SML and have those be have those be um, um, be made in the in the open source project, right? If we want to continue to support and use SML in our own product, that's absolutely right. Yeah, I mean, I think a really exciting parallel is um, what I think the data format uh, Ice Cube, right? That uh, mm -hmm. or with Iceberg, Iceberg. I'm messing Iceberg. it up. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, that uh, you know, Snowflake and Databricks are using. So now that's completely open standard anyone can create um you know a query engine that that runs on top of that so this is a very similar analog um but for semantics and analytics yeah yeah well there you have it um john you did a great job explaining it and uh, we're really looking forward to um getting you guys all involved uh and uh we'll be reaching out to other vendors and, and bringing them into the fold and hopefully we'll develop a a real healthy ecosystem around us, around business semantics and semantic layers. So, John, thanks a lot for uh, joining me today, and to all of you out there, thank you for uh, for listening to uh, our data driven podcast. And like I said, stay data driven. Thanks, John. Thanks, Dave.